I'm Scott L. Miller. This is Sam IT, where IT meets business. And today I want to talk a little bit about the just happened cloud strike issue that happened with Windows. And so a lot of this is still unfolding as I'm recording this. The outage is still being reported. People are starting to understand it. But there's a lot of people who have already gotten it fixed. This isn't the huge thing that it sounds like. So this is my understanding as the, at this time is that we're looking at a Windows third-party antivirus slash security product that pushed out a bad update, uh, which caused a blue screen of death, and machines are not booting. And the fix is as simple as going into safe mode or booting to a third-party operating system, such as Linux or whatever, and then deleting a specific file and then rebooting the computer, and it's able to come up. This is not uh, a cyber attack. This is not a uh, security gap, per se. It is simply a bad patch. These things happen from time to time. Uh, it is uh, essentially no chance, it seems, that there's anything malicious. You don't have reason to suspect that. You expect bad patches from time to time, especially if you violate a couple of important rules. One, running in the Microsoft ecosystem. We're going to talk about this more in other videos, but we've been warning companies, one, specifically about Windows for a very long time, decades, right? You, Windows is not built to the standards you would expect in a production environment. So that companies are rolling out large amount of Windows in general indicates either that they are stuck making bad decisions, right? They're trapped in some way. Vendors are forcing them to do something because of their industry. That's a very real thing we see a lot. Those are environments we expect to be in high risk, right? If the if the government uh, does not hold vendors accountable for pushing downstream security flaws, then they're going to be able to do so. And it's, it's going to be something that businesses organically are going to be at risk. Uh, that's something that just requires either a lot of push from an industry, a lot of push from individual customers, or the government to step in uh, to take care of. Short of those things, you expect to have vendors take the easy road out, vendors that are doing a bad job taking the quick and easy approach to things are going to win in most cases because customers are not very good at making decisions about selecting vendors. They'll take the first one that meets their needs in most cases, the one with the flashiest advertising, not the one with security, not the one vetted by IT. And so because of that, they're going to be rewarded for doing a bad job. And so when customers do that, those vendors take over industries and those that are doing a good job rarely get a chance to bubble to the top. So those are things that just happen organically. And unless there's some push against it, we expect it to happen. So that's why we see a lot of windows in a lot of places, but also we see a lot of windows because companies just don't do their due diligence. They accept the default choice. Someone goes and buys a laptop when they're starting the company. They never think of asking IT for a strategy. They make the decision to go to Windows before they make the decision of engaging IT, and then the rest is history. And that could have been 30 years ago, and now the company is stuck with that decision, and it's so entrenched, no one even thinks of questioning it, and IT is afraid to broach the subject because it would highlight decades of bad decision-making if they even have IT that's capable of asking that question because in many cases they've hired people based on the bad decisions they already made, and so they're there to reinforce them. They're there based on them rather than them they're being there to question them. So that's the first thing. Second thing, we have a situation where people are replacing the built-in Microsoft antivirus. So inherently, we're talking about people who deployed a product they don't trust and are replacing a very well-vetted, very well-ranked internal product with a third-party one. That's not to say that CloudStrike is bad, but it is a category of products we generally warn about. You need to be really careful when putting third-party antivirus onto Windows. If you feel you need to do that, one, you have absolutely flagged that you don't trust the product you're on. Why did you deploy something you inherently didn't trust? We're not talking about adding an extra layer of security. We're talking about replacing the security that's part of it because Windows Defender is built in and is generally ranked as the best in the business or tied with the best in the business. I understand that CloudStrike offers some additional capabilities, but why do you need those additional capabilities? Why do you need them in that space? That's probably problematic on its own. And additionally, uh, you're disabling the very, very, very good security that, that is already there of all the things in the Microsoft ecosystem. Defender is one of their strong points, both because of how well they build the product, but also because of its integration and reliability and testing. So for those reasons, replacing it with a third party is incredibly dangerous. So companies that are potentially impacted here have already made those two issues and the problems. And then the third problem here is that in a spot where you have security concerns, I realize a lot of companies are affected here. Some have no security concerns whatsoever. But when we're talking about places that have paid for CloudStrike, we're talking about people who are shelling out a lot of money, presumably because they're willing to pay a fortune because they deployed windows that they don't trust. Now they're in a situation where they want to spend a lot of money to feel like they're securing windows 
even though it itself is not very secure, right? This is a, a completely crazy pl mental place to be, to be deploying Windows in a scenario where you want to be secure. That fundamentally doesn't make sense. And we just had that news. We're going to do another video on that soon. But that is something that there's no one working in IT who can plausibly, and, and at this point in government, in business, it is so well known that Windows is not secure. It has never been secure. It was never built around security. That was never part of its DNA, never intended to be that way. Not to say that it's horribly flawed. It's just security is not a focus. When security is important to you, Windows would never enter the conversation. By allowing Windows into that discussion, you have stated absolutely black and white security is not job one probably not job two unlikely to be job three it's just not a priority period end of story there's no arguing with that absolutely none that would be a completely ridiculous argument to make there's nothing wrong with deploying windows lots of places you want to have it not in places where you need security having something like cloud strike which is not cheap which is not easy which has a lot of risks on top of windows means you're in a weird scenario where you have this security doesn't matter, but you're willing to spend a whole lot on trying to secure what you didn't care about being secure in the first place. That's not a great place to be. So you're talking about customers who are in this really unhealthy space. Maybe they were coerced into using Windows. Maybe you have one division that forced it and another division that's like, yeah, but we need to be secure. How do we try to have some semblance of security in a fundamentally insecure role? Like that, that can be where that is. So this is a sign that you have unhealthy companies with IT that probably doesn't have necessary decision-making to get to security points. And then point three, all these products are closed source. So patches cannot be vetted and verified by the public. With Windows, we already know we had major admissions by, by Microsoft that security was not an important thing to them, that they put the country at risk. That was very recent. And we, we things that IT has always known, things that business have always known, nobody can claim that Microsoft's admission of this is where they learned about it. That is absolutely implausible. So that we know that Windows is very insecure. And CloudStrike being on top of it with patching, you have this multi-layer patch risk that you have to deal with. We've always known that Microsoft patching is very risky. Uh, you've heard, if you've ever heard of people talking about how they hold off on patching, hold off on updates, that is unique to the Microsoft ecosystem. That is unique to a place where security is so unimportant, where stability is so unimportant that people don't trust the vendor with its own patching anymore, which is really significant. That CloudStrike then is on top of that, does its own patching, and that all of this is closed source is additional problems, right? If you're in the Linux ecosystem, as an example, you have open source processes, you have maybe your company is not going to do it, but big companies are going through these products and vetting patches before they roll out. So they have eyeballs on it. Yep, there can still be mistakes. Yes, there still are mistakes, but the number of mistakes and the uh, speed at which they are rectified is completely different. It is a fraction of the number of errors, even though with a much larger install base and a much larger sprawl of code. And uh, with third party, if you also have that Open source, yes, something that's a very, very niche third party could be problematic that there just aren't enough vendors vetting it. But something like CloudStrike, if that was open source, you would have hundreds or thousands of major vendors that are our customers that are looking at the source and doing their own patch testing to be sure before they roll it out. But because all this is closed source and the way that the Microsoft ecosystem tends to work, the nature of being in a scenario where you have chosen to run closed source, not well vetted software as the core of your business or an important part of your business, simply indicates that you're not going to have that due diligence for other closed source third party patching as well. So we have this issue where the customers who are affected by this really are in a spot where, again, just like with other things we said, generally when you're impacted by this kind of stuff, it's because decisions were made that you were okay with this. You were willing to take on these risks. Now, this is a major one, but mostly it's major because it's impacting so many companies all at once. And all those companies are in basically the same position where their IT didn't have strong enough decision to protect the company. The company felt like they still needed security and they just chose these, these specific products and put themselves in this specific type of risk. But this is not something that, you know, companies that were choosing Apple, which is still closed source, but is known for having a really good patching process, they are not affected. Companies that chose Windows and ran it the way we recommend, they're also not affected. Still at more security risk than others, but way better than this, right? They don't have that additional third-party closed source, unvetted, unverified uh, process going on that could also present risk, which is exactly what we saw here. Uh, if you're running Linux, Ubuntu, Fedora, anything, you're not, you don't have any of these risks. None of these things are things you have to worry about. So there's a lot going on here 
that we know the companies that are impacted have fallen into this space. And this is a lot of companies, but these are the things we warn companies about. How did your CEO allow this to be the culture of your company? How did your board allow you to have a CEO that has this kind of culture in your company? How did an owner allow this to happen? Why did Windows get chosen? Why closed source? Why clouds uh, strike? Why this combination of things was, this is not cheap. This is not people being cheap, right? Which is what uh, instantly people go, well, we can't ex afford to do something else. Are you kidding? You can't afford to save money? This would have not just, you know, someone who wasn't running these things could have had a lower cost IT infrastructure, lower cost to acquire, lower cost to update, lower cost to secure, lower cost to manage. Even your administration is cheaper when you move away from Windows in 99% of cases. It is, it, Windows is a luxury across the board, not just a luxury in how much it costs, but also a luxury in security. You have the luxury of not having to worry about being so secure because that's just a luxury. That, that's not something you had to worry about. So you're talking about companies who are willing to throw money willy-nilly at things and then threw money at the security and then fell into this niche. So it's not companies that were really doing their due diligence. They're not worried at all. And this isn't some big attack. This is a more or less very dramatic but mostly expected industry behavior. We're not targeting any specific customers with this. It's no specific department that made these mistakes. This is a broad, we just expect in the way that market dynamics work, in the way that especially publicly traded companies are managed or mismanaged in reality, uh, that creates a culture of just doing what's politically easy and not doing a good job in IT, or having IT that wants to do a good job, but in a management team that doesn't listen to them or respect them or doesn't take the priorities of long-term profit seriously because they're just looking for some short-term gain, uh, things like that. When this is what your market is like, we expect this result on every so often to come up. Today is just one of those days where we hit statistically what is expected in a broad range of, of, of companies. If, this is, uh, if you're in IT or you're in business and you're worried about your own company, be aware. Best practices would have protected you. And not just all of them, any one of them, any of running open source when security matters, not running Windows when security matters, just making good choices, vetting your, uh, your decision making, right? I've never seen a company intend to do a good job and choose Windows when they did. I've only seen companies that were either pressured to do so or didn't actually go through any decision process whatsoever, just accepted a default, allowed someone to just end up with Windows, not even realizing they made that decision and choose it based on that. I've never once seen a decision process gone through and Windows be chosen at the end of it. Never in 35 years in IT. Uh, it will happen, but it is extremely rare. So had you followed best part, any attempt any basic attempt at best practices, using open source would have protected you, not using Windows, just doing a good operating system decision process at the beginning of the process, not using a third party antivirus when you have uh, one of the best, if not the best in the industry built in already, not disabling built in security, uh, not using third party closed source security software. Again, another layer of why would anybody purchase a closed source product claiming to be security. If they were a real security vendor, the first thing they should have told you is that closed source has no place in a security world. So that's a warning. You're talking about a vendor who's supposed to be doing this job and didn't warn their customers, or maybe they did warn them. We don't make a good product, but you should buy us anyway, and people still bought them. I doubt that they did that, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But that's where we are. So that's, uh, that's my analysis of, of kind of what the, the political and, and business scenario is around uh, CloudStrike. Of course, this is going to impact a lot of people, but really the fixes are out there. This also highlights the value of out-of-band management, those companies that have uh, OOB for their, their desktops and their, their servers, which most for servers do, whether it's hardware. So first of all, servers should never be impacted by this. No server in production since before 2005 should have Windows running on bare hardware. That should never come up as a scenario. It should be a virtualized instance, in which case you have out of band from whatever platform you have underneath of that automatically, regardless of your hardware. Even if you're running in cloud, even if you're running in uh, on a desktop, you have that extra protection. Anybody who virtualized Windows is automatically protected by this. You're all set. Of course, Hyper-V is Windows may have been impacted by this. I've not heard, but it's also never a best practice to have Hyper-V, right? So that also should have been ruled out as well, especially as it's been discontinued in production form. 
uh, the the way that you can deploy it now is not production ready. So it doesn't matter that people say it's still available. They try to claim it is not production installable. It does because it violates two important rules. One is it requires the Windows system with too much uh, cruft, and two, it's uh, closed source. And actually, three things. And three, it requires a license. None of those things are acceptable in a production environment. Point blank. There's just period. That's it. You cannot make an argument for anything in production at that level uh, having those things, and there's no reason to. That's the most important thing. It has no value to justify any of those. It only has negative value, no positive value versus other products. It's, it's more expensive to operate, doesn't save any money. There's no, no benefits. So uh, uh, those things, um, th not running the third party, there's so many things that just good practices, best practices, any one of would have protected companies. So if you're in business and you're worried about your business, how do you protect against these things in the future? Standard industry best practices, as almost always, are enough to protect against almost all issues. All these large spread issues that people see in, uh, in business, when we have these giant outages, when we have huge vendors impacted, it is essentially always because fundamentals of IT were not followed, nobody cared, and someone did what we call politics over profits. So they allowed a, a, a vendor's salesperson to be in charge. They didn't want to question a CEO's decision. They didn't allow the people who were experts to speak up. Uh, they felt that their job would be in jeopardy if they pointed out the errors of their superiors, things like that. No one wants to correct mistakes of the past. So it'll make someone look bad. They don't want to. They don't want to reflect on past decision making. Those kinds of things. Things that should just fundamentally, right? Anyone getting out of middle school should say that's not a healthy way to adult. And yet businesses make these mistakes all the time. That's why we call it politics over profits. And it's how businesses tend to run. So all it takes is wanting to treat IT with respect, wanting to treat IT seriously, and you should, to, to five ninths, not have to worry about things like this whatsoever, because that's what IT is there to protect you against. And uh, we're, we're always, when we're seeing these outages, seeing just basic fundamental mistakes that were easy to avoid and obvious and predicted, and yet here we are. And people will say, well, we're Monday morning quarterbacking. No, absolutely not. We have been talking about every single one of these issues, not these vendors specifically, not CloudStrike specifically. That's kind of haphazard or happenstance. But Microsoft Windows, absolutely. Putting in third-party antivirus, absolutely. Closed source software, absolutely. Best practices, absolutely. To the point where I have a book that covers item after item on this, even though it's not a Windows one, you don't need. Best practices for systems administration, best practices for IT are universal. None of that stuff is specialty. That's another mistake that companies often make. We'll talk about that in another video. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.